Welcome to a world beneath the waves that's beyond your imagination. Today we're diving deep into the colossal engineering feats of underwater mega projects. From towering oil rigs to record-breaking tunnels and bridges that defy the odds, you won't believe the scale of these extraordinary structures. Hit that subscribe button and let's get started. Now diving into the huge world of oil rigs, every day over 100 million barrels of oil are consumed globally. Consequently, oil companies perpetually hunt for new oil fields to satisfy growing needs. A substantial portion, over two-thirds of the world's oil and gas are tucked away beneath the seafloor, necessitating the construction of massive offshore drilling platforms to access these valuable resources. Let's talk about the history and evolution of offshore platforms. In the late 1800s, the initial offshore platforms were constructed and used to drill in water that was not deeper than 100 meters. Since then, oil companies have poured a lot of money into technology, and as a result, oil rigs have grown increasingly taller, with some even rivaling the height of the tallest skyscrapers on land. In 1977, Shell built the first truly gigantic oil rig, Prospect Cognac, in the Gulf of Mexico. Surpassing the height of the Empire State Building, it was constructed with a budget exceeding $100 million. Since then, even taller platforms have become somewhat usual, and nowadays, four oil platforms are standing that surpass a height of 500 meters. The oldest among them is Shell's Bullwinkle platform, established in 1988. With a height of 529 meters, it nearly matches the height of the One World Trade Center in New York. In simpler terms, many years ago, Chevron made a very tall structure called the Petronius Compliant Tower, which was 640 meters high and held the record for the tallest structure for some time. But it was overtaken by other tall buildings like Burj Khalifa in Dubai and Medeca Tower in Malaysia, which is 679 meters high. Nowadays, some oil platforms float and can go as deep as 2,900 meters into the ocean. It makes one wonder how are such gigantic structures built under the water. Building an oil rig is a huge task. They are first built on land and then moved to the ocean. For instance, Bullwinkle's super long 400-meter base was made in Texas while it was sideways. It was so big, they had to move it to the ocean on a special barge. And it took five days just to put it on the barge because they had to reroute local water traffic. Then, it took three more days to get it to the right spot in the ocean above an oil well. Bullwinkle was then gently dipped into the water and attached to the ocean floor by engineers using special controls and underwater cameras. The top part of Bullwinkle was made separately in Louisiana and placed above the base. This whole thing took over five years and cost more than $500 million back then. The title of the biggest structure ever moved was only beaten once by another sea platform, the 460-meter high troll a platform near Norway. Although Bullwinkle is the tallest fixed sea platform, Many like it stand still and drill about 500 meters into the seabed. For drilling between 500 to 1,000 meters, there are special structures called compliant towers. Made of concrete and steel, they're tall and thin, and they can move with the waves. But the deepest oil wells are way deeper, about 3 kilometers under the sea. Creating steel towers and fixing them deep in the ocean isn't easy. So engineers use floating oil rigs to drill. They stay in place over oil wells thanks to modern positioning systems and are tied to the deep wells with anchors and really long cables. The Pedido oil rig, run by Shell, Chevron, and BP, drills over 2.5 kilometers deep using a long floating cylinder 170 meters long, which is dunked in the ocean and connected to the sea bottom with nine ropes. Built in Finland in 2008, it was the deepest oil rig until 2016 when Shell introduced stones which can work 2.9 kilometers under the seabed and get oil from even 8,000 meters deep in the ocean. Massive underwater projects aren't just about big oil platforms. Building really long underwater tunnels is super challenging too. People tried to make the first underwater tunnel in the early 1800s. They used mining techniques, but it didn't work because the ground was too squishy and water got in the tunnel. But things changed with the invention of new tools. The Thames Tunnel, which is 400 meters long, was successfully completed in 1843 thanks to a new invention called the Tunneling Shield. This allowed them to build tunnels underwater that didn't flood, making what seemed impossible possible. Since the early days, subsea tunnels have improved a lot. The creation of the tunnel boring machine made way bigger projects doable. The tunnel with the world's longest underwater part is the Channel Tunnel, which is 50 kilometers long and links Britain and France. 
Finished in 1994, it's seen as one of the 20th century's coolest engineering works. People talked about building a tunnel across the English Channel long before it was made because traveling by boat that was often rough due to bad weather. When technology got good enough, both the UK and France started drilling from their shores to create it. Before building began, experts looked at the ground under the English Channel and chose to dig through a chalky layer because it was the easiest. They began digging in 1987 using 11 huge tunnel boring machines, each almost as long as two football fields and heavier than 70 buses. Five machines started in France and six in the UK. They dug through the chalk, moved the leftover bits with conveyor belts, and used concrete to make the tunnel sides strong against wave pressure. The French and English sides met in May 1991, after four years. The project has three parallel tunnels, two for trains and one for service use. Building the Channel Tunnel cost more than $14 million, which was three times more than first thought, but it ended up being a good investment because trade worth more than $120 million between the UK and Europe goes through it every year. Even though the Channel Tunnel has the longest underwater part in the world, the second tunnel in Japan is the longest undersea tunnel in total at 54 kilometers long. It was built after a sad event in 1954, when a ferry called Tuiamaru sank during a typhoon in the Tuguru Strait, and sadly, over 1150 people died. After a ferry tragedy, and because building bridges was too dangerous due to very bad weather, leaders decided to make a train tunnel under the Tuguru Strait. They started building a test tunnel in 1971. Digging began on both sides, and they met in the middle about 12 years later. After another five years, they finished the main tunnel by using explosives to blast through the sea bottom. The second tunnel ended up costing about $7 billion to build. It's still one of the most amazing things engineers have made to this day. Finally, let's talk about underwater bridges. Even though we might not think of bridges as underwater things, a big part of a bridge's pier, the support part, can be underwater. There are different ways to build piers for bridges that go over deep water. Often, people use caissons, cofferdams, or driven piles. Caissons are made of concrete. They're built on land and then moved into the water while keeping the inside dry. Workers remove sand and keep water out until the caisson touches the hard bedrock below, and then they fill it with concrete. The caisson then becomes the base for the building above the water. Cofferdams are like big pits with walls placed in the water. They pump out the water to make a dry, safe place for building. When the foundations are above the water, they take away the cofferdams and keep building in the normal way. Driven pile foundations are another good way to build bridges underwater. A driven pile is a big steel pole that gets pushed into the rock with a machine. It's kind of like hammering a nail into a wall. Once the steel poles are in the rock, they fill them with concrete to make a strong base for the bridge. Bangladesh recently finished making its longest bridge, which is 6.15 kilometers long, using the driven piles method. What's really amazing is that the Patna Bridge is also the deepest one globally. They pushed the steel piles down to a record depth of 127 meters into the riverbed. Building the Patna Bridge was even harder because the river flows really fast. This made the pining work super tough and they had to change the design for at least 14 of the bridge's pillars many times over a whole year. Engineers also had to think about the Padma River soil shifting up to 65 meters over the next 100 years. The Padma Bridge cost a whopping $3.8 billion to make, and it's expected to boost the country's annual GDP by 1.2%. We're already seeing some of the benefits as the bridge has shortened the distance between Dhaka and Kulna, an industrial hub by over 100 kilometers and reduced travel time by more than half. Which of these projects do you think was the toughest to build? Do you know about any other ocean construction projects we should talk about? Share your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll be back with more in the next video.